Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, guys, to this new live stream. Let me just make sure that I have the right title. Yeah, next to the Monday stream. Perfect. Cool, 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 cool. We'll start in just a couple minutes, as soon as we get everything set up. I still don't know what we're going to do today, by the way. So, if you guys are here in the chat and you want to uh, suggest something, go for it. Should we do some seabrush? Seabrush is always good. Actually, I had an idea. Hey, Mert. Hey, happy gamer. How are you guys? Good morning. Good night. Give me just one, one a second, please. I I need to send a uh, I need to send an audio uh, to my guys here at the studio. It's gonna be it's gonna be really fast. Don't worry. Give me just one second and we'll start. Okay. Hello, Bunty. How are you, my friend? Uh, if you want, guys, you can start suggesting things because I don't know what we're gonna do today. I don't know if we're gonna be modeling or if we're gonna be sculpting or texturing. So. Let me know if there's a specific thing that you guys want to uh, check. Let me just send one message real quick, okay? I'm not going to leave. I'm There we go. Sorry about that, guys. I had to uh, I had to um, send a message to the studio. Magic one, fantasy one. That's actually a great idea. I think that's uh, that's really cool. Should we do that? Should we do a fantasy one? Fantasy one concept. Should we grab a concept or should we create one ourselves? What do you guys think? There's a lot of very cool concepts here. Ooh, this one's actually pretty pretty cool. Hello, Andy. Welcome. I kind of like this one, to be honest. It's a lot of sculpting. Ooh, that, like, Cthulhu one. By the way, did you guys see the the, the keycap video that I did uh, yesterday? I love you too, 3D Learner. <laughs> uh, did you guys see that video? I, I was really proud about that one. We didn't get a lot of uh, a lot of views, but uh, I was, or I did this very cool little keycap. Um, you can see it on the thumbnail there. It's a Cthulhu keycap. We 3D printed and everything. So if you want to check it out, it's going to be, or it's on the channel. And the file is actually available as well. If you guys want to download and print it yourselves, it's for a Cherry MX uh, key uh, keycap thingy. Cool, cool. Glad you liked it. Nice, nice. Enjoy. So yeah, let's let's do one concept. Let's follow a concept so that we we don't have to like depart too much from from something. This one right here looks really cool. Like it's like an old like interesting one and it has a couple of like different uh like handles i really like this one it's like old uh, old thing so i'm gonna copy this image right here and let's bring it into pure ref there we go 
Do we play some music as well? Okay, so um, whenever we are doing any sort of concept, I'm going to be doing this one right here. This like uh, the, the, the fourth one, because this one is like Cthulhu. We already did Cthulhu, although this one's also quite nice as well. Should we do this one, the old guy? You guys, you guys pick. So, so um, which one should we do? Should we do the old guy or should we do this like a, like a runes, okay, the, the runes one? And 3D Learner is asking about um, the the course, the, the Mac Lion course. When we hit 30 viewers, I'll show you the render. I'll show you the final render of the of the lion. Okay? So so we'll do that. Old guy says Canucks, not the old one, says Mert. Uh is Seabrush sculpting record for 3D Pro Artists? Yes, yes, it is definitely required. Uh, ba -ba -ba -bum. Where are you from? I'm from Mexico. I live in Mexico, in the north part of Mexico, in a small little town called Saltillo. Well, it's not small, but it's a, it's a, it's a nice old dude. We got two boats for the old one, and we got two boats for not the old one. So it's it's, it's gonna be a a a, a, a coin flip. So let's go to Seabridge. We'll decide in just a second. Either either way, we need to do like the the upper one part, which is this one right here. So here we go. The way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna start with a sphere, which might seem a little bit like weird. I'm gonna start with a sphere. I'm gonna get rid of a dynamic perspective. Let's go to the to the right view. There we go. And I'm gonna scale this up. And kind of like flatten it on the sides as well. And that's gonna give me this sort of like peel looking shape. Gonna try to keep it a little bit rounder. We're gonna be using, of course, Trim Dynamic to to get like a nicer silhouette. And then with my move brush, I'm gonna go for a really, really big size here on the move brush. I'm gonna remove dynamic for just a second. There we go. I'm gonna curve this out a little bit. Did I change the color of the long material? No, I don't think I did. It, it, it's oh well, actually that's the math cup gray. Yeah, you're right. There we go. That's the that's the long material. So now with uh, trim dynamic, which you guys know is one of my favorite brushes, I'm gonna start like sculpting sort of like jaggedy woody effect. So I'm going to go tra uh, or clay build up here. I'm going to add a little bit of the volume that we have right here, this like curvature right there. And then again, trim dynamic. We're going to polish that like that. I'm going to flatten the, the bottom part. And we probably need to widen it up a little bit. Because the the ones should be a little bit thicker on the on the lower parts. There we go. Can we put some music? You guys like music? I can't. Unfortunately, I can't play the kind of music that I normally play when I'm working because we get copyright strikes and it sucks. Uh, but we have like the League of Legends like creator playlist or something, and it's not that bad. It's a good one. Let me play some music because. It's Otherwise, it, it feels a little bit boring as well. Uh, League of Legends creators. There we go. Let's go with Diana today. There we go. We should have a little bit of background music there. Great. So, uh, let's answer some questions. Uh, 3D Learner says, at my university I'm learning 3D modeling and I want to be really good at it, but it's frustrating when I do mistakes and things go wrong. So, uh, sometimes I get talks like, hey man, I'm really perfect for 3D, a lot of 3D, but struggling with motivation and learning, suffering with self-doubt. Yeah, it's uh, one of the hardest things I would say, uh, my friend, for, I think the music's too loud. There we go. So, one of the hardest things about this career that we choose 
is the fact that it's a very creative creative is very taxing on the on the mental state we are, are constantly being challenged by our limitations and by our learning curves and stuff so patience is is a key factor like you need to understand and it took me several years to understand this but you need to understand that things don't happen from one day to the next one like yes you will eventually find like a technique or like a like a trick or something that's really really good and that really really helps you uh, but more often than not it's, it's more like a combination of uh, of, of practicing uh, like frequently if you do that then you're gonna be able to um, you're gonna be able to uh, to improve a lot more so so it's it's it's, it's practice practice is, is very important but I, as I've mentioned before it's, it's good practice right like you need to pick challenges and and works and uh, and projects that are gonna um really push you towards what you want to do I i've had students that are like i want to be the best at 3d uh, modeling and they start learning animation it's like what are you doing like if you want to be a 3d modeler you need to learn about 3d modeling not animation if you want to be an animator then you need to learn about animation and you need to do the things that animators do uh it's a it's a complicated thing but it's uh, it's part of the of the process hey arian i got your email yesterday my friend i'll i'll, I'll review it in in, the, in a couple of minutes okay so we're almost there. We're almost at the 30 concurrent viewers. When we hit 30 concurrent viewers, I'll show you the uh, the the lion that we just finished. I finished it. I finished it yesterday. I'm just doing the renders. Actually, after we finish the live stream, I'm gonna finish some renders and I'll prepare the intro video and we'll submit everything so that you guys can uh, can see that one. Uh, let's see. Mr. Safe is asking. Hey, I'm confused. Can you tell me when to use ZBrush and when to use subdi modeling in Maya? Like the work you are currently doing can be done in Maya, or why not? Oh, that's a great question, actually. Yes, like we could definitely like model this wand in Maya with like extrusions and stuff. However, um, since it is very organic and we're going to need a lot of detail for like the wood grain and stuff, especially if we want to like 3D print this or something, uh, the ZBrush is usually better. The, the, the rule of thumb or my rule of thumb is if it's very organic or has a lot of detail, I'm probably going to be doing it inside of ZBrush. If it is uh, very like a mech, very, very hard surfacey, or it needs to be, or you need to use the subdivision thing uh, properly, then I'm going to use Maya. Subdivision is really good for commercial and film work. For games nowadays, everyone pretty much does everything in ZBrush so that they can go as high as possible on the details and on the polygonal like uh, modeling and then they retopologize. So so it's it, it varies. It's a little bit uh, different. What do I listen normally? Um I I love uh like um like folk music. <laughs> like uh, there's a very famous Spanish band called Mago de Oz and uh, and they have this sort of like folk fantasy music sort of stuff it's really really cool i love uh, like indie music um like uh yeah yeah I, I don't listen a lot to the pop music but however there's a genre that i found not so long ago which is called nightcore which is pretty cool it's like pop music but with like a metal twist and like a um higher pitch vocals it's really really cool i i, I find that one pretty pretty cool to to listen to and uh, every now and then uh, I'll, I'll listen to some, of course, rock and stuff like that. Like, I, I'm not a huge, like, music geek, so I, I can listen to a lot of stuff, to be honest. 31 viewers, there we go. Bunties on the mark. You guys are now gonna see the lion. This lion, my friends. This lion is the next premium course that's going to be releasing very very soon the um the project is finished it's 20 hours of, uh, of videos it's full maya modeling like we model every single thing inside of maya and this is the final model result so this is the the lion right here let me turn on the wireframe so that you can see subdivision modeling as uh, as mr safe was saying it's a it's a it's like a it's like a, the continuation to the hard surface course so if you've taken the hard surface course uh that's available on our on our platforms uh, this is a great like second part to it we go through the whole modeling process for this lion and we take a lot of things into account like everything is it's not like perfectly engineered but things are meant to be uh rigged and it's supposed to be uh, it, it should be able to move very, very nicely so yeah the uh, this is the the final lion and let me show you the render let's do a quick render here and let's see this oh and you'll wait until you see the render my friend it's gonna be it, it, it's really really cool i'm really happy with the result 
I think I think you guys are gonna love the process. It's a, it's like a masterclass on modeling and uh, UVing. We do like four hours of UVing, so every single piece of the of the character we're gonna UV. We texture using UDEMS. We go for like really high textures, really realistic textures. Let's go to the shot cam. There we go. Yeah, it's gonna be available very, very soon, my friends. As I was saying uh, earlier, I'm finishing the renders today because, it, as you can see, it, it does take a, a little while to to render the whole thing. So I'm finishing the renders um, today, and uh, and then I'm gonna submit the files and, and get everything ready for you. There we go. There we go. Final reveal. The noiser is kicking in, and it's uh, getting everything ready for you guys. Yeah, uh, Soid. I I, I, I I used Soids and Transformers as a reference. I did not do the concept. The concept was done by a good friend of mine. His name is Ed Fox. He's been uh, helping with uh, with the concept pieces for a couple of courses now. And uh, yeah, this is the final result. So every piece is uh, properly modeled, properly UV, properly textured, uh, properly placed, so everything could eventually move as a as a mechanical uh, uh, like character. I, I want to do another course later, not maybe not the next one, but later, where we uh, take this guy and we uh, rig him. We rig him and we animate him so that we can um, we can actually like move him around, right? Every time you want to rotate something on Maya while snapping, you can hold the G key. Oh, nice! Can't wait to watch this one. Looks so good. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, again 20 hours, 20 hours of uh, of content, uh, the full modeling process. I actually have a nice little. I'll show it to you guys because I like you. I have this little. I even show you how to do like a nice like a, I wouldn't call it like cinematic render, but more like presentation render with like some assets and props. But look at this. This is the, the process. We we document the process of, as we as we go along. So we start with a very, very basic blocking, like no pre-generated things, no like everything from scratch. And uh, little by little, we start adding all of the different pieces. We start doing all of the different parts. First, we do the inner skeleton, which as you can see, it's like, I really put a lot of thought onto the skeleton to make sure that we could move it and we could rig it and it made sense from a from a rigging standpoint. And after that, we start working on the armor, armor, more armor, final pieces of armor. And then we go on to the, the main, which are just like solar panels. We do the UVs for everything and then we texture. So yeah, that's uh that's the that's the general process, guys. It's uh it was a really really fun fun project and it was fast. Like I had to do this or I had to finish this uh, through February, uh, which was really really intense. Uh, but it's done. It's done. So you guys are gonna be seeing more of this in the next couple of days. Let's see. Hey Hitesh, how are you? I'm not sure what Hitesh means. Is that like teacher or something? If that is teacher, I'm doing good. If that's a name, I'm not Hitesh. I'm Abraham. But thank you. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh no, he, his his uh, his uh, dev records is, is saying hi to everyone else. Cool. So, how good is GPU rendering in Maya compared to CPU? It's really fast, like really, really, really freaking fast. As you like, I'm I'm rendering the uh, the turntable right here, and it's taking like 20 frames per render. So it's uh, it's really, really, really fast. However, uh, it, it does crash a little bit every now and then, which is not that big of a deal because you can just like restart it. But it's a, it's a really, really cool, um, really, really cool system, to be honest. If you have, you, you do need to have a powerful GPU, of course, to, to get the best out of it. I got a 3080 Ti last year, um, which I regret now because I got it when it was really pricey and now the prices have gone uh, quite down. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's it. first says hey abraham i'm starting to learn more about niagara in unreal uh yes uh, that's, that's that's actually one of the courses that we've been planning first we, we've been planning some dynamics courses and uh, I'm, I'm debating whether to focus on game uh like effects or on the um, on like bifrost and stuff i think we're probably gonna go games because it's a little bit easier for everyone to have a, a computer to to run like game stuff uh and yeah and I, well uh, bifrost and stuff is, is really or can be really heavy The hi Abraham, he's my really good friend. Oh, cool, cool. Well, welcome, my friend. Welcome. Cartoon character series. Uh, that's also a really good idea. 
No, there's not. Uh, I, I I haven't seen a really like a strong uh, difference. Uh, random, random, randomly doodles. The, the, there's not a lot of um, of difference. I would say. However, when you're doing like very precise calculations, like you, if you're going to be doing a lot of gla glass and uh, and uh, like emissive surfaces and stuff like that, CPU is is more precise. It's definitely more precise. So for really like realistic things, you might want to do CPU simulations, for instance, or like uh, volumes and stuff. CPU uh, can give you a, a nicer result, uh, but for other things, um, uh, GPU is, is really, really fast, really good. Uh, Peter Lin asks, have you ever used Mart before? It seems to be more commonly used in realistic skin. Yes, I've used Mart before. I used it a long time ago, to be honest, uh, like what, like six years ago. I haven't used Mart since. The thing is, it's actually quite pricey. It's not as, as cheap as a Substance Painter. Um, and, um, and, and and it's used a little bit more for like, like really high-end film stuff. So most of the stuff that I do as an artist is uh, is like games and uh, and like more freelance work. So it's not like super AAA. And, um, and we don't really use it or need it. However, yes, uh, Mari is really cool. We do have a course. We released a course, I think, not so long ago about Mari as well. Uh, it wasn't done by me, but it's one of our, our top instructors as well. And that's uh, a really good one. So I created this cube. I gave it Dynamesh. And now I'm going to start like modifying the silhouette a little bit to start creating the, the base of that uh, one. It's a really cool one, to be honest. I'm going to use Stream Dynamic to bevel the borders and round the whole thing. <laughs> thank you guys, thank you. Next 3D modeling course on hard surface weapons. Yeah, that's also like, I have three main ideas. It's hard surface weapon, it's the, uh, like a creature, because uh, we haven't done like a monster or something instead of Seabrush, like a creature sculpting, uh, like a series. Uh, there's another idea, the effects idea, uh, advanced rigging, like, uh, there's there's a couple of ideas. Um, I'm, I'm going to focus on finishing this one, and then uh, along with Nalene, we'll, we'll figure out what the, what the next one will be. But don't worry, well, I'm trying to do one course every single month. So, um, so yeah, you guys, you guys are in for more content. Don't worry about that. If you want to rock, make character like Atomic Heart. I've seen the designs. I don't love them, to be honest. It looks interesting, but it's not my type of uh, games. It looks cool though. It, it, it's a nice. It, it looks. It looks. It's a style again that I don't particularly love, but it, it's uh, they're good models. Let's see. Cherry Cassette says your marble design control is awesome. Thanks. You're welcome. That was that was a really fun one. Because Marbles Designer is a really weird software to teach because you don't teach much about the software. I mean, the software does have some tools that you need to understand, but I had to learn so many things about like traditional sewing and tailoring because knowing those things is what allows you to do cool things inside of Marbles. So yeah, if you guys haven't checked that, you can check the description. I think we have the link to Skillshare and it's uh, it's got like a free trial. Um, Hi Dank says, do you have a course about notes and hypershade? It's really hard. I'm a newbie. What, uh, can, can you specify hi, what kind of things do you want to learn about the notes? Because more often than not, we just use the notes to connect textures. We don't really use the notes to, um, well, at least myself, like I don't use it to generate like procedural things. Back when I was a student, there were a lot of people that were doing like procedural texturing with nose. So they would recreate textures such as skin and, and eyes and uh, and things like that with um, with nose instead of uh, texturing. But I never did that. So so I'm not sure what, what specific thing you're confused about Hypershade. But if you have one question, let me know and, and we can add that to the to the list of, uh, of possible courses. I'm doing a very quick sketch here with uh, Damien and Standard to let me move the wand back into. There we go, <laughs> so that you guys know what I'm doing. So I'm I'm doing the the very like uh, quick like blocking of of this detail right here. There we go. Let's just move brush. 
Hey, Istiak, how are you? Good morning. Christopher says, should I ask permission to Autodesk for posting time lapses videos on YouTube and what is XYZ texturing? Okay, so those are two different questions. Uh, no, you, I mean, if you own the software legally, if you have a license or you're a student uh, and you're using the, the student version, then you're totally fine. Like you, you don't need to ask permission. You can share that as part of your portfolio. That's, that's fine. Um, if you're using the student version or the teacher version, just remember that it's supposed to be a non-commercial version, so you shouldn't be making any money out of it. They're not going to go after you like a lot of people do it. They're, I don't think they're going to go after you, but the proper thing to do would be to get a license. Uh, Autodesk offers the, the indie license, which is really cheap. That's the one that I have, and it allows us to pay for like a traditional license and, and do all of the things that you might want to do. Um, as for XYC, XYC is a, a, a company that provides uh, scans and textures for super realistic skin. So if you're going to be doing a lot of displacement and a lot of like uh, really, really uh, like close ups of characters and, and different parts of the characters, then XYC is a really, really helpful tool. They have sales every now and then for some of the more famous like uh, pores and stuff that they, that they have, like the skin details. It's really good. It's really, really good. I, I have a couple of them myself. I've used them as well. Uh, I do believe we use them on the um, advanced character texturing course or the sculpting course. However, uh, it depends because if you're, for instance, doing this for a video game, you're not going to even be able to capture all that detail. So, but yeah, like XYC is, uh, they do have a software as well, I think. I haven't really checked it out, um, but I do believe that that's a, an interesting software that you could use for your, for your productions as well. Can you lower the music? Yes, of course. Let me know if that's better. So here, just using my traditional um, my traditional brushes, play build up, trim dynamic. As you can see, where I'm, I'm just like guesstimating the distances and the and the forms. I'm not really like tracing or anything. If I wanted to trace, we could of course uh, bring this in and just like trace it as a perfect image. But this is one of those exercises that I I really recommend people try to. Um, try to do it on their own. Like don't, don't try to trace everything because this will train your eye to, um, to, to get this better. Actually, I want to show you something guys. Give me one second. You guys remember the, the little dude that we've been working on for the, the past couple of weeks. Look at this. Ta -da! The Slurk is ready. I'm going to be uh, submitting this file as well so that you guys can download it if you want to 3D print it and use it on your games. I used it on my game last week and uh, it was a really fun fight. So yeah, the Slurk is there. I know right now it's a little bit out of focus, but it's a, it's a really, really cool sculpture. And it's, it's so fun to to like see your or, or um, have your... What's the word? Like have the, the character on the screen and then like also have it right here like there we go like that little dude it's right here and we did this if you guys want to check it out all of the live streams are uh, available on the channel as well so you guys can go there and uh, and check them and learn from all of those things will this prop be stylized or realistic you you guys tell me should we do it stylized or should we do it realistic i can do both can try doing both uh, from the concept it looks a little bit stylized but i kind of want to make it realistic so i think i'm gonna go realistic to be honest now here what i'm gonna do is i'm actually gonna break symmetry because it kind of seems like this thing is, is like folding over the other side you can see like a little bit of a, of a wood detail right there so that tells me that this thing kind of like expands around like that And then probably comes back. So all of this area is going to be filled. It's going to be an asymmetric prop, which is fine. And we just keep creating like this is like bark, right? Like someone took a, a piece of a tree and carved in the bark. So actually, the, the clay buildup is a really good tool for, for this particular uh, process. 
because it leaves these sort of like like lines that make it look like the like the bark of the of the tree. I'm gonna use trim dynamic here to flatten things a little bit. That frog is a single subtool? No, it was actually multiple subtools when we were doing it. So it's the body, the horns, and then the eyes. But when we uh, 3D printed, I did, of course, 3D printed as a solid object. So I used a Boolean mesh to uh, just make everything a single, like, solid shape, which is important for, for 3D printing purposes. Let's turn on symmetry again. Why? Because this area right here seems a little bit more symmetrical. We can work with this a little bit better. Realistic, beautiful, stylized, realistic, realistic. We got three boats for realistic, so we're going to be doing realistic. Uh, Jose Mauricio Flores says, ¿Qué tal, Abraham? Si voy a estar modelando en Maya, ¿se pueden desactivar algunos plugins para que el sistema cargue más rápido y trabaje mejor? Sí, este, sí, sí se puede. Generalmente los más pesados, eh, José, son XGen, Bifrost y ya. Si desactivas esos, automáticamente vas a tener un buen boost en tu, en tu performance. Digo, no, no, vas a, no va a mejorar el performance de tu... ¿Cómo se dice? De, del momento en el que estás trabajando, pero al momento de abrir y cerrar malla, va a abrir y va a cerrar más rápido. Por cierto, estamos pensando hacer tutoriales en español. Así es que si te interesa, dime aquí en los comentarios para saber si es buena idea. Uh, 3D Learner says, Abraham, can we do next project something that is inspired from Power Rangers or modeling? Power Rangers... Oh, dude, you bring me back. I was a huge Power Ranger kid when I was little. One of my birthday parties was uh, Power Rangers. I was the Red Ranger, of course. And uh, yeah, yeah, we can do something. Pizza. I'm watching you while eating pizza. I had pizza last week. I haven't had pizza since, but uh, I love pizza. Oh, you guys want me to tell you a really funny story about pizza? So last Friday, um, my wife was like, hey, let's get some pizza. And I was like, okay, fine. But it, it was very, it was not super late. It was like 8.30 or something. And I know that at that time, all of the restaurants here in the city are full. So getting a pizza was going to take a little bit longer. So I told her, hey, you know what? Like download one of the apps from the pizza store so that we can uh, just order it and just pick it up, right? That way uh, it's going to be faster. And she did. She downloaded the, um, the app. However, she made a mistake and ordered to a uh, place or to, to one of the locations that was on the other side of town. <laughs> so we had to drive all the way to the other side of town to, to get our pizza, which was not very fun. But, uh, well, we had to do it. We already paid for it, so, yeah. Sad days, sad days. There we go. So now I'm going to grab my clay build up here. I'm going to start carving in a little bit more. Now, we definitely need a little bit more resolution. You can see that we're getting like the Vark looking looking nicely here. But in order to really make it seem like it's separated from the rest of the of the tool, we need a little bit more resolution. So I'm going to increase the resolution to, to double what we have right now. And I'm going to start carving with a really small brush really close to where the bark is supposed to end. This is going to give me a really like sharp line on the on the bark and it should allow me to um to generate a, a more like natural look wood is one of those things that's very natural so it doesn't you don't have to be like perfect on the strokes because it, it just looks like bark so and then of course all of this kind of need to soften them up i don't really like using um smooth to soften things up because it blurs a lot of the elements down so i'm using trim dynamic here now you can see here on the on the one that there's like a runes that were carved in in this sort of like uh, new wood that we have over here. I'm gonna start creating this sort of uh, surface so later on we can we can do that. That's great, Jose. No problem. We're we're still gonna do uh, English. That that's not something that's gonna change. It's just an idea that we have floating around. SPD Power Rangers. That that was a little bit like when I was a little bit older. My my younger brothers uh, saw those, but to me, like the best ones were the original, like Mighty Morphin. Those I I, I was one of the the '90s kids that got to see all of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers.
yeah, I, I, I've been trying to improve that uh, C Master Flex. I, I know I, I, I tend to go a little bit faster than than a lot of people. I I don't know why. I, I seriously have tried to to slow down, but it's it's just part of the way I, I kind of teach. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm trying to to improve on that, and I also have been including more uh, keyboard shortcuts on the newest videos. The the one that you're talking about, the night that was an older tutorial. I think that I did that like two years ago. Uh, it's still very, very like good information. Like all of the the bases are are there. However, it, it was uh, when I was just starting with the with the tutorials. So I apologize for for talking fast. If you have any question, let me know, and I'll, I'll be happy to uh, to help you. Because I know it can be, I know it can be quite uh, quite tricky. Where did you learn English? That's a funny story. Um, when I was uh, well here in Mexico, we have. Uh, um, a primary school, which is a sixth grades, right? You go from first to sixth grade, and then we have something called secondary school, which is three more grades, and then we have high school, which is another uh, three grades. And after that, you go to college or to university. And uh, I was uh, fortunate enough that when I started primary school, all the way from primary school, so when I was like six years old, my my parents got me into a um, into a school that was uh, mixed. So half of the classes you would take in English, and half of the classes you would take in the, in Spanish. So that's that's how I got really good. Uh, and then when I was in secondary school, I I um, like developed a really like huge love for reading, and I started reading a lot of English like fantasy books. And that, that really helped. And then, of course, I went to Los Angeles, where I studied my uh, university at Noman, and um, and that, of course, helped me quite a bit as well. But yeah, as, as with anything, practice, practice, practice makes perfect. Watching shows in English with subtitles uh, is also a really nice, like technique. And as for speaking, because I I I do think I, like I'm not the best at speaking, but I do think that. I can do it properly. Uh, you need to practice. I was really shy at first, but you need to get rid of that fear and just start practicing with people. And uh, and any chance you get, you just try to speak in English, and and you'll you'll improve. Andy says, uh, "Hello, Abraham. I'm currently making a character. Should the head be on a separated UV map, or is it enough for the body and the head to be on the same 4K map? What is your opinion?" Um, as with a lot of things, it depends, but usually the head is on a separate map, mainly because you want to have a little bit more control over the shaders, and that's going to allow you to get a, a nicer effect. Now, the question would be, like, what, what is that going to be for? Is it going to be for a game? Because if it's going to be for a game, then maybe due to performance reasons, you might want to keep everything in a single map. But if it's for, like, a, like a commercial or a film and stuff like that, then having a, a separate piece uh, is also a good idea. There we go. So again, they mean the standard trim dynamic and clay buildup, like nothing else. We're not doing any any other things, and we're already getting a really nice organic thing right here. I'm learning English with GRPG games. Yeah, <laughs> it, 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 it sounds like a like a silly thing, but games are actually a really really good way to learn as well. I I, I was um, I, I learned a lot from from English things as well. Now, here, the runes, I, I don't think I want to do the runes on the sculpting. We could do them, but it's it's going to be a little bit more tricky. And I think those that's one of the details, since it's such a small detail, that might be a little bit better off uh, done inside of uh, texturing. So now I'm going to I'm gonna get rid of, uh, of symmetry, and we're going to start adding some more specific details. So, for instance, here we have like a, like a knot on the wood. So I'm going to add the knot. And we can start blending the knot with the with the wood as well. Knots are really interesting because they have this very like intricate layers. I'm just gonna do a quick sketch right now. We're definitely gonna have to to add more resolution later on. But we can start with adding something like that. Can you show a portfolio for a fresher and how many characters should we add in our portfolio? Yes. So I'm going to show you what my portfolio was when I uh, graduated. Do I still have it? Uh, 
No, that's not me. Where is it? So when I graduated, my main... There we go. My main uh, goal was to be a... Uh, was to work on cinematics. So that's why I, I did this. So it was... I think it was six pieces of... Um, six pieces that I, that I presented, right? I was th three characters. This was the first one. This uh, like uh, ice giant fighter. It's uh, it was done for cinematics, so it had like UDIMs and like 4K textures and everything. It was like a really really complex character. And then it was this environment right here by Eitan Sana. He's an amazing concept artist. I think he's at Naughty Dog or he was at Naughty Dog. Um, and then just a couple like shots. So that's the second piece. And then uh, there was that. There's the concept right there. Uh, I used Marty for those, uh, some of those. I did this character as well. This was was a really fun one because I actually did the textures on Substance Painter when Substance Painter didn't have Udemy support. So I was able to hack my way into creating some nice looking textures. Um, that's the that's the character right there. The concept. A couple of turntables, and then I did this environment. This is the fourth piece, and then the final piece, which you're about to see. That was like my like my best piece at that time, right? So it was a, a, a portrait, a character portrait that I did for, again, for like cinematics and stuff. Um, nowadays I see it as like, oh, so many errors, so many things that I could fix. But at the time I was really, I was really happy with this character right here. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's it. I showed the, the passes that I was getting and how I was like combining them into getting the final image. And uh, this was my portfolio back in 20, 2016. So like what, like, seven years ago. That's the portfolio that I created when I graduated school. And that one was the, the portfolio that got me my, my first couple of jobs. So I hope that, uh, I hope that helps. Christopher, I was actually English literature student three years before. Passion drives me to draw. When I joined course to study drawing there, I found 3D life is unpredictable. Yeah, I was studying medicine before I, <laughs> I became a 3D artist. I was going through med school here in the in Saltillo. I did one year of med school and uh, and after that I um what's the word? I, I jumped into into 3D. So yeah, I, I understand you, man. I understand that life is really unpre unpredictable. Uh, Burke says, Abraham, I want to ask a question about the cloth. When we're making a cloth for marbles or zebras, should we add thickness to the cloth or should we keep without thickness for production? Um, again, it depends what production. If it's for cinematics, you normally don't add thickness because you're going to be simulating that and it's going to be flowing with the wind or moving or like just like a, in general, like a, like a changing, right? However, if it's for games, I do recommend having thickness in certain types of games. For instance, if you take a look at League of Legends and World of Warcraft and stuff like that, where things are a little bit more stylized, you're going to see that they tend to give uh, this very uh, stylized, uh, thick effect to all of the armor pieces and the in the cloth. Other games like Assassin's Creed and stuff like that, you might have like a cape or like a, like a scarf and those probably would be uh, thin as well. So it, it depends. It depends. But it's not that difficult to add thickness. Uh, you wouldn't normally add the thickness inside of marbles. Marbles, you want to keep things uh, thin. Uh, but then later on, on the production or down the production line, you might want to add thickness. I have another knot right here. Bring the wand back. A little bit more curved as you can see this thing is not as intense there we go a little bit more curved as well and always context like we we need to see how things are becoming like thinner and thicker in context, so we need to see the the full one, and it's 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 roughly half and half on the on the sides, on the sides. I, I think we're we're good there. I might want to make this thing a little bit longer, to be honest, just a tad bit. Makes a little bit more sense. Let's see. Uh, hi, Abraham. Covered Con says, Hi, Abraham. I'm working on retopologizing a dog like character, and I was wondering how do you reduce stretching during animation in the armpit and where the legs meet uh, on the side of the body? That's really, really, a really good question. Let me show you. Uh, so, this dog right here inside of, uh, of uh, Seabrush, 
has really good topology on the arms. So as you can see, the arms or the, the main topology of the arms actually finishes, actually finishes right here. Make sure quality. So as you can see, that's the loop of the arm and it finishes right there. And that allows us to, to avoid the formation on that particular area. And then there's another loop right here that goes all the way to the neck. And then another loop that goes right there that crosses. So, so it is it is a little bit unavoidable. I mean, if the dog is going to be like moving the arms like this and stuff, you're going to have a different topology. But if it's just going to be running around like normally, then this is the, the topology that you want to have or as close as uh, possible to this ones as you want. Uh, stretching is, is, is kind of unavoidable. You will eventually have a little bit of stretching here and there. And again, it depends on the production. If you're going to be doing a dog for a commercial, you're probably going to be using muscle systems and things like that that are going to make the movement really, really realistic. If it's going to be for a game, it doesn't really matter. Like, things are going to bend in weird ways. That's It's, it's normal. Burke asks again, and also watertight mesh generally, which part should we make as watertight mesh in the objects generally? Uh, the body, the body should more, more often than not be watertight. And uh, I would say like 90% of the things that you do should be watertight. It's very, very weird that I have things that are not watertight. So almost every, every single time I'm gonna have things that are uh, watertight. It's just cleaner. It's just cleaner. It just helps a lot with things like surface scattering. It helps with uh, thickness maps instead of substance painter. Like having watertight things is, is generally just uh, recommended. Can you add the reference in the background? Yes, we could do that. I I'm, I'm trying to free sculpt this a little bit more, but I could definitely just like have this right there. I'm going to right click and then I'm going to use this mode called... Where is it? Uh, transparent to mouse. No. Oh, now I messed this up. Control T. Now th there, there's a way we, we could, for instance, use the see through option to see through it, but I'm, I'm not using that right now. Oh, now I can't move it. <laughs> I messed up my PRF. Let me see if I can close this. Save. There we go. So yeah, yeah, we, we could do this with the with the thing as you mentioned on the background, but I, I want to do it a little bit more free. I was I was mentioning at the beginning of the of the video that doing it like this, like freestyle, is a good way to practice for um so to practice like the, the shapes, like know how to how to attack shapes and how to like properly capture them and stuff. Now here we need to rebuild a little bit of the bark that we destroyed. So let's go right there. And down here. Let's see. What is Critical Hit Academy? Your own studio. It was. It was my own studio. I have I have two uh I had two studios. Right now I just have one. So right now I have a studio called Hyperlab, uh, which is where we develop the like augmented reality and, and the virtual reality things, like the projects that I've talked about in the channel. And the Critical Hit was my school. Uh, I, I used to teach classes, like uh, on a physical class, well, not physical, what's the, what's the word? On-site classes. So people would come here and learn. However, uh, the pandemic, uh, it, it was really rough to us uh, as an academy and I had to close it. So yeah, like cr cr critical, critical Hit exists no more. Now it's just my personal brand, Critical Hit. But yeah, that was that was my my school. Actually, I think that's how uh, Nalin found me when I first started teaching here for Nextit. He he probably saw some of the things that I was doing with the with the school. I'm I'm nurse seventeen years and I'm in three D stuff. Oh, you were a nurse for seventeen years and now you're into three D stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's uh. That's what I'm saying. Like, for instance, myself, I, I see myself doing this for a long time, of course, but uh, I really want to learn about like our um, woodworking. Woodworking seems like a really, really fun thing. I'm not sure if I could do it as a career, but I definitely want to do it or learn this as a hobby. Blacksmithing, like if I could learn how to be a blacksmith, that would be so epic. I would love to do that. However, the <laughs> the equipment and the, and the areas that you need to do that is, is a little bit more complicated than, than woodworking. Let's add a small little knot right here. I 
there we go. Yeah, for, for cinematic, uh, as you mentioned, Berg, that's that's usually the, the way to go. Can you add the... Uh, hey, I have purchased... Uh, Renu John says, I have purchased all of your courses working on my portfolio. I need help with skin stretch, skin microgeometry. Can you suggest or make a course on that? I'll, I'll add that to the list. Let me... Let me add that to the list of uh, topics that we need to go. Right, I have a, the huge list here that you guys have recommended. Skin micro detail. There we go. By the way, some of you guys haven't seen this one, but this is the, the new course that's going to be releasing really, really soon. The Lion course, hard surface modeling, coming really, really soon. I'm finishing everything today, and um, and uh, it's going to be on the on the platforms in like the next couple of days, probably. So this is the next premium course that we're going to be releasing and we're working on more stuff as well. So stay, stay tuned. Hey, what the hell? Comfy restore. There we go. Uh, 3D Learner says, how do how to do modeling like Wanoko for the search and our station, please? That mine was mind blowing. Let's look for him. Wanoko for the Oh yeah that looks really cool Wow yeah this is pretty sick Yeah I mean it's just hard surface modeling well it's not just hard surface modeling it's hard surface modeling it definitely takes uh like the the thing that he's doing with this that's really interesting is that he is he probably has some knowledge about engineering, and that's why he's making things like fit and do everything like properly. But yeah, he's pretty cool, man. I mean, the the course that I'm uh, saying, the the lion course, is definitely gonna be helpful uh, for some of this stuff. But yeah, this looks really nice. Hard surface in ZBrush. Uh, we have one. I did one course on that. I think. We we do have one hard surface uh, course. It's like a, it's a beginner level course where I go through several examples of how you can tackle like armor, weapons, uh, a little bit of environment, I think even. Uh, we already have that, but maybe if you if you mean like a, like a big robot or like a big suit of armor, yeah, that, that could be a good idea as well. A more advanced hard surface seaverse course. Bifrost, oh, dude. I know, I would love to, to teach Bifrost, but it's so, so, so complex. It's really, really complex. And here's the thing, uh, it's a really complex system, like it's not very easy to understand. It's very technical. There's a lot of like programming and uh, and uh, and technical like things, and it's also not a thing that there's a lot of demand for. So unfortunately, we also need to uh, evaluate that sort of things. Like like are people actually looking for this content? And the people that want to get into Bifrost, it's it's very very few very few students. So that means that we would even need, we would need to sell it really really uh, pricey. It would be a really pricey course. Or, or a very simple one. Uh, we're, we're still debating. That's why I was mentioning that maybe we'll do some effects, but it's probably going to be for games. Uh, because using Niagara and, um, and the Unreal Engine, it might be a little bit easier to, to, to teach those sort of things. Because another thing about Bifrost, I, I, I used it on, uh, last week on the, on the Japanese environment. And another thing about Bifrost is that uh, it's really expensive on render time like it, it takes really really long to do a render like without the bifrost my scene the japanese tunnel was rendering at like 30 seconds 40 seconds with bifrost it went all the way and it was just like, like a very simple simulation it went all the way to like 10 minutes so so it's not really it's not really something that you will be using as much especially if you're like a small studio because it's really 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 expensive Are you going to make Retobo plus GBs? Yes, yes. Not today, not today, but uh, we'll, we'll be doing it. Actually, the, the live stream is uh, is getting close to the end because I need to go and uh, finish the, the premium course. I need to finish all of the, the videos and everything. Uh, but we'll, we'll continue with this wand uh, next week and uh, we'll do Retopo, we'll do textures. We're going to do this for, for a game. Uh, I'll even get it into Unreal if you guys want it uh, so that you can see it on the hand of the character. Oh no, uh, Andy! If you separate the head from the from the mesh, then the head's not gonna be watertight. Nor is the chest. Like you separate them, uh, they're no longer watertight. Uh, but you get like a better control over the shaders. That's that's usually what what will happen there. 
I think I, I do want to add like the like the beginning like sections of the runes. So we'll be like right there. And right there. And then up here, I'm just going to do like the black lines. So right there. And it goes like right here. I'm going to use those lines to later on in texturing paint the, the runes that we have right there. What are my PC specs? I have a Ryzen 7 5... 800x i have an nvidia g uh, 3080 ti i got 32 gigs of ram and a bunch of hard drives like i have like five or six hard drives um that's the general i got two my two monitor setup my tablet my pen display microphone i do have a, a nice camera for the video um that was an investment that i had to do last year because the other camera that i had was really crappy and uh yeah Geometry nodes are still winning. Oh, uh, yeah. To be honest, I I've seen more like cool stuff being done with geometry nodes than with Bifrost. And it's very similar. Like you can do pretty much all of the things that you can do with um, geometry nodes, you could do with Bifrost. But Bifrost is for some reason more scary than geometry nodes. Like uh, it, it, the, the learning curve to, to get into Bifrost is really, really high. I've tried it myself. I I I've been learning uh, for the last couple of months. And every time I do a tutorial or an exercise, it's like, damn, this is this is complex. And if I feel that it's complex, I know someone who's just like beginning their 3D journey might be like, this is way, way too much. Do you ask permission to model off someone else's concept or do you credit them when it's, once it's done? Um, I, I do both of those things, uh, depending on, on the, how famous the person is usually. If it's a very, very famous concept artist, then you probably do want to ask for permission. However, like the rule of thumb or the the like the unspoken rule is that if you model something that you didn't design you need to credit the artist and you need to let them know I, i've had several students that have done that the worst thing that has happened uh to one of my students was that the artist that they took the concept from they were like no i don't like how you did it i i think it looks bad please take it out that was like and it was not bad it was just like a, a, a little bit like a a different stylistic choice in a couple of things so so they had to take it down right because the artist didn't want their name to be um related or or um what's the word like represented with everything else or with that specific piece of art so but that that was that was pretty much it and it was just one time like it, it just happened to one of my students uh, like a couple of years ago to me I've, I've never had an issue had an issue with an artist uh, i always credit my artist when i uh when I take their concept pieces. And nowadays, for, for the last couple of courses, what I've done in order to avoid any issues is I've been commissioning the concept art. So for instance, for the lion that I showed you, I, I paid, of course, my, my friend, Edfox, to do that concept piece uh, for us. So we bought that concept piece and now we, like, it, it's ours, right? So we can do wh whatever we want with it. So, yeah. Can I be good at Seaverse with mouse as a beginner? Oh, not really, man. You're going to have a really hard time. Like, you can definitely do it, but it's going to be a little bit complicated. If if you want, or if you could save for, like, a, like a Huion. Huion is the brand that I'm using right now, and it's really good. And they sell, like, a really cheap ones, to be honest. Like, this one right here. This one. Like, it's 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 50 bucks. It's a uh, thousand pesos, but it, in dollars, it would be like 50 dollars. And with this, it, it's more than enough to, to start working. Like, it's the most basic one, and it will give you a really, really nice result. That would be my advice, because, yeah, if you don't use a tablet that, due to the pen sensitivity, you're going to be suffering quite a bit. But, yeah, there we go, guys. Not bad for one hour, right? Look at that. Really close. I got a couple of angles wrong. Uh, but overall, I think we captured the, the essence of the of the piece very nicely. And um, and uh, we're going to be working on this on the next couple of days. Let me answer some more questions and then we'll finish the, the stream, okay? So 3D Learner says, props, weapons, hard surface, vehicles, environments, all my modeling. I want to learn. Okay, we'll, we'll add that to the list, of course. Uh, Umang Patel says, I found a great concept for modeling on Pinterest, but I could not find the concept artist. What should I do in this situation? Try to do a reverse image search inside of Google. You can upload the image and it will like try to find who the artist was. If you can't find it, then, uh, I mean, you still can do it. That's fine. Just make sure that you like add a little note that says, 
um, like a not original, uh, not my original concept art or something like that, so that people know that you did not design the thing, you just model it. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> Chili says, can you guys ask Arash to make another course on the speed trees? Yes, of course, of course, I'll let them know. You wouldn't want to with the mouse. No, you definitely don't. Constant ends tomorrow. Mert, yes, you are right. Contest ends tomorrow. Give me one second. <laughs> oh my god. Contest does end tomorrow, and um, and uh, I'll, I'll upload a video tomorrow talking about that so that people can submit and everything, and we'll be announcing the winners on Friday. So make sure to submit if you've been uh, working <laughs> working on that. Ah, it couldn't be a video from me without the sneeze, right? So, yeah. Yeah, XP Pen is also a really good brand. Um, I haven't used it personally, but I have some students that have, and it's it's really good. Um, I personally have a, a Huion pen display, which has been... Um, amazing. I, I was using a, a like traditional tablet for like 10 years and last year I, I, I got a little bit of extra money and was like, let's get a display and it's just amazing. Um... Okay, yeah, I, I have a, a video three learner. You might want to look it on the channel that says how to how to learn anything or something like that. And it, it shows the strategy that I suggest to my students whenever they want to learn any skill. So that might be interesting for you. Uh, do you do hard surface parts in Maya and sculpting organic parts in Seabrush? Yes, like switch between both. For the for the lion, uh, this one right here, everything was done in Maya, like every single piece was done inside of Maya. Uh, but if I was working on a on a like another type of product, I would definitely do certain parts inside of Seabrush or Marble Designer, like any software that you can use, Blender, like whatever. If, if there's a part that you can do easier in another software, just do it. Like there's no reason not to do it. Gracias, Jose. Gracias. ¿Qué andamos con las alergias? <laughs> yes, uh, I, I agree, Three Learner. I, I do, I do, got, uh, like, won the lottery by by marrying her because yeah, she's a she's a psychology master. She's a master now, and uh, she's really good at, at helping me with that sort of stuff. Uh, Pastor says, should everyone learn each and everything as an artist, like modeling, sculpting, etc., just one field? Um, my general advice for that it it depends on the industry on your particular uh, country or place of residence, because if you are in like the United States or Canada, you might want to be in a specialist so that you can get like better jobs. If you're in a place like Mexico where there's uh, like there's not a lot of uh, people that know what we do, then being a generalist is usually better because you're gonna have to do a little bit more of everything. So it depends where you live or where you want to live, and it depends on your particular uh, skills as well. Uh, Arian, yes, I, I did review your scene. I'll, I'll answer an email, okay? I'll, I'll send you an email for that one because I, I gotta go in just a couple of minutes, uh, but I will send you an email. I, I looked at it yesterday. It was really, really cool. Why do people out those spheres for the renders? It's a way to make sure that your lights are not overexposed. So it lets people know that this is your perfect white, your perfect gray, and your perfect metal. So all of the surfaces should be calibrated so that they don't overexpose or destroy the scene. If I see that the spheres are like overblown or way too dark or way too light, then that means that the light on the scene is not properly set up. So it's just a way, it's just like a reference thing. It's very similar to the little color thing that they do for photography. Very, very similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the that was the idea. I wanted this to be like a Power Rangers, Soids, Transformer kind of thing. Uh, Three learner. Character related question from Kurav Das: Do you create the mouth back during sculpting or after read topology? I do it during sculpting. If you check the advanced character creation course, I do that during sculpting, and then we read topologize. How would you set up something like that? Like like this? Like this? It's um, it's just a it's just a white sphere, gray sphere, and a chrome sphere. As for this guy right here, this is the next course, uh, Clown DFX. I'm going to be releasing this course in the next couple of days. So stay tuned on the channel. Make sure to hit the little like bell icon, the little uh, like, share, everything. And uh, and yeah, that's it. Yeah, color combination could be slightly different. Uh, this is supposed to be like it's following like the lion's like color. So it's like the sand color. But yeah. Any free courses on sculpting by you? We do have a ZBrush. I think it's ZBrush Core or ZBrush Mini Core, and it's free. You can check that or look for that one in the in Skillshare on Udemy. And also, there's a lot of free content here in the channel. Like, I've done a lot of, like, sculpting tutorials um, and sculpting, like, uh, like explanations. So just, like, take a deep dive on all of the channels. I've been doing this for almost two years now. There's more than 500 videos on the channel. So, yeah. How do you make a tail in ZBrush? You can try using a curve, probably, um, or, like, C-spheres. I would do, like, one of those two things. 
And Umang, I have been modeling some weapons now and I have a good grip on modeling now. What should I model according to you? If you've already done a model of a weapon, I would suggest doing something like a vehicle, like a car. It's like a final exam for a modeler. Modeling a car is really important. And uh, like a ship, like a spaceship or something like that. Something a little bit more complex, like bigger scale. That would be a good, a good thing. So that's it, guys. Thank you very much for being here on our Monday uh, live stream. We've been doing this for a couple of weeks now, and it's been a huge, huge success. I love uh, having all of these interactions and answering your questions. We are going to have more videos this week. Uh, I'm also thinking about having a second day of live streams uh, during the week. Still not uh, like uh, still not set in stone, but we'll, we'll talk about this in the next couple of days. Remember, tomorrow we have the Creature Contest. The next course, the Premium course, is going to be releasing really, really soon. You can submit your stuff for the Creature Contest tomorrow. The Portfolio Review is also open you can check some of the old videos from last week and, uh, and you're gonna find the links for both elements so that you can submit and and have everything and uh yeah that's uh, that's pretty much it uh gorav uh what type of tail i won't be able to show it today uh, about the tail but let me know what type of tail like just write it in the comments right now and i'll do a video this week on how to model a tail inside of uh inside of sirish i promise so yeah um that's it guys thank you very much have a great night, have a great day, have a great week, and I'll see you back in the next couple of videos. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, and that's it. Bye-bye.